This is a video about a sprang technique. Vertical lines. With a multicolored warp, you usually end up with vertical lines. So now, how do you make those lines move diagonally across the cloth? If you knew how to do this, there are all kinds of other patterns possible. Let's consider these two halves. They each started out as almost identical warps. The one on the left has got vertical lines. The one on the right has those lines moving diagonally. How do we do this? Well, let's start off with a warp 20 threads. Two of them are purple. Now, working interlinking sprang, we begin by crossing the threads in pairs. You pick up a back thread, bring a front thread to the back, all the way across the row, and these threads twist around each other. In interlinking spraying, every second row is a plate row or a braiding row. It begins with a three thread edge stitch, two threads up, one down. And this offsets the pairs across the row, allowing cloth to form, but here these purple threads each now have a white partner. Now that plate row, the braiding row, is followed by a follow-up row, resetting the pairs, and here we see that the purples once again have purple partners. Now after several rows of work, this is what it looks like. It's not a continuous line, but really it is those two threads. You see on the plate row, the thread wraps around white, and on the overplate row, the follow-up row, they have a purple partner. Now let's look at that hat again. Those vertical stripe lines are not completely straight. There's a jog on the plate row where the threads have a white partner. Here I've used four threads for the vertical lines, and that gives you a bit more solid a line than just two threads. But let's get back to the idea of moving the threads across. How do we do that? On a plate row, we begin, and when we get to this place, by rights, the purple should have a white partner, but he doesn't want a white partner. The purples want to stay together, and the whites want a white partner. So to do this, we're going to have to fetch the very next back white thread to be a partner. We go between the two purple threads, and we fetch the next back thread. We bring it across, and now it's available to be the partner with this white thread. Then the two purples twist around each other, and this is the twining stitch. Twining implies two threads, and these two will have the same thread throughout the rest of this piece. I return to the basic interlinking stitch. Now on the next row, what happens? Once again, we've got one thread, a white thread that risks having a purple one. No, 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 he wants a white partner. We have to reach between the two purples to find the back thread to be the partner to this white front thread. The two purples twist back to front around each other, and we work to finish the row. Now after several rows, we can see we've got a diagonal line, and it's worked its way to the left side. Perhaps at this point we should talk about moving the other direction. How do we do that? You can make the change of direction on a plate row or over plate row. doesn't matter. The deal is when you get to this last white thread, the white thread is going to have to wait while we work the purple threads in pairs. So I do this by taking that white thread and I put it into what I call reserve position between index and middle finger. Then I work the two purple threads, pick up the back, put the front down, moving them in the pair to the right. That white thread that traveled across is technically a front thread. I put it back in the front position and then I do regular interlinking stitches for the rest of the row. On the next row, once again, as I approach those two purple, that last white thread goes into reserve position. I cross the two purple threads. I bring the white thread out of reserve back to the front, and it finds its back partner. And I finish with regular interlinking stitches. After several rows, this is what it looks like. And because it's spraying, I've got a mirror image down here, the threads moving the opposite direction down below. Now going back up to the top, 
Well, looking at these two diagonal lines, one leaning to the right, one leaning to the left, the one that leans in the same direction as the stitches seems to wedge itself in between the stitches, and it seems a bit skinnier than the one moving the opposite direction, which has to jump over stitches. This is totally normal, and I've seen this in historic pieces. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about patterns, because this is very helpful in planning. This is how I like to write patterns. I use graph paper, one square for every thread. I'm right-handed, so I work from right to left, and you'll see a number one in the upper right-hand corner. On row one, I've marked off the stitches. Each stitch has two threads, so two squares per, per stitch box. Row two starts with a stitch that involves three threads. And so on either end of row two, we've got a block that's three squares long. And you're beginning to see the grid structure that emerges in the interlinking stitch. I find it's easier if I color code these edge stitches. So I indicate the right edge stitch with blue and the left edge stitch is green. Now yes, it doesn't say if it's two up or two down, but it's assuming a bit of knowledge. And in this manner, these patterns read equally well for S twist and Z twist. So here is a pattern for that vertical stripe. I've got 20 squares and they are grouped together on the first row as groups of two or those uh, pairs of stitches across the first row. The second row, starting on the right hand side with a blue square, that three thread edge stitch, you can see how the, those two purple stitches each have a white partner on the plate row, the braiding row, and they have the purple partner on the overplate or the follow-up rows. Now the point of telling you all that is to show you how I would write out the pattern for those diagonal lines. You see here the purple squares move one square at a time over towards the left and then they begin moving one square over to the right. This is how I would plan this out. It's very handy because if you're new at this, not quite sure, then you can count the number of squares across the row to be sure of the number of stitches that you need to make before or after you encounter these purple threads that move and are they moving to the right or moving to the left. So let's go back to those hats that we looked at at the beginning and I'm hoping looking at that hat on the right that you now feel confident you know how to move these lines to the right and to the left. Okay, what happens when they meet and they cross? Um, that's another video. That video is Sprang Twining 2.